independence in 1960, Nigeria has designed and implemented various government strategies towards the development of rural areas. But despite the huge resources expended, the efforts have not achieved the desired impact. There's still notable disparity and lopsidedness in infrastructures and level of poverty between the rural and urban areas in Nigeria. The rural population has limited access to services like schools, health centers, safe drinking water and sanitation, and good roads. Poverty is also endemic in many of the rural communities. Therefore, community development in a broad concept has been applied to practices of civil leaders, involved citizens, professionals, among many others, to improve various aspects of the communities. The Community and Social Development Project, CSDP, is an initiative of the Federal Government of Nigeria in partnership with the World Bank. It has an ambitious vision, which is to mobilize resources, improving skills and knowledge to promote community-driven development for the positive impact on the poor and vulnerable in Nigeria. This is an initiative of the Federal Government of Nigeria with support from the World Bank. And it targets alleviation of poverty in rural poor communities. Especially those in very remote rural areas. And of late, this has been increased to also include the people that have been internally displaced in the northeast of Nigeria, uh, particularly in the areas affected by the Boko Haram crisis. For the purpose of the project, there are criteria set for communities who wish to participate. A community can send a proposal as long as it is rural and follows the existing state government classifications of areas designated as rural, semi-urban and urban. A community can send a proposal if it lacks infrastructure or social amenity that falls within the projects normally financed or if the existing ones are in state of disrepair or are inadequate in meeting community requirements. After their expression of interest, we, the CSDP now goes to the community to sensitize them. And after sensitizing them, we go for what we call PRA, which is just like a needs assessment, where the entire community come out to tell us so many things about the communities and what are their problems. We now, with the community, prioritize these problems by themselves selecting or rather doing election by the community. That is the first, that's another thing. After that, they will now go to their area council in case of FCT. And if it is in the state, they go to the local government. The community must also be willing to contribute to the financing of the micro-project in the Community Development Project. In the Federal Capital Territory of Nigeria, for example, the FCT Area Council Service Secretariat says there are over 850 rural communities, according to available statistics, that are in need of rapid development. The FCT is among the 30 states that are participating in this project. After the approval, we are going to, we, the CSDP will also train the members of the uh, committees, the, the main committee and the subcommittees, how to handle the projects. After that, we, the CSDP will start funding. But before funding, the community must also have their 10% contribution in their own account which they have registered, they would have registered with the area council and the area council would give them a letter of registration as an association. They will use that to register to open an account. They will give us a um, statement of account to show that they have the 10% contribution of the total cost of their project. And that will make them to be committed because the projects that they're going to execute now, their own money is there and they will be the one to execute the project. You cannot see that they will own such kind of a project. So some of those criteria and the simple way. 
And when they do the work, we give money in tranches to be sure that um, we make sure that the project actually goes. Many experts see community development typically as efforts aimed at building stronger and more resilient local communities. They see community development as a process where community members come together to take collective action and generate solutions to common challenges affecting them. The CSDP, therefore, is offering a different approach to community development and it is working because it has impacted many communities in the country and the federal capital territory. The, the bug, as it were, has, uh, has caught up with so many countries in the world, uh, not just developing countries, and there are spectacular results to show for the involvement of people in determining uh, what the applied resources of government to do to improve their lives. The partnership between the Nigerian government and the World Bank is not a new concept. Governments of many developing countries have worked with professionals to promote participative democracy, sustainable development, to promote equal opportunity, equality and social justice through the empowerment of communities, especially those other rural areas. So, the World Bank through the CSDP strongly advocates and encourages the concept of community-driven development, CDD. It means that the whole development that we'll expect in poor areas will be driven by the community members themselves. They will be in the driver's seats. As simply put, they will decide what are the things they would like to do, what are their priorities. They will plan it design it, and finally implement it to the extent that they will monitor it, including monitoring the utilization to make sure that it eventually yields true in terms of helping them to improve their welfare. And it's a way of diffusing and decentralizing development such that a multitude of development activities can go on at the same time in very, very nodal, many, many nodal points of, 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 of community development across a nation. Experience has shown that when given clear and transparent rules, access to information and appropriate technical and financial support, poor communities can effectively organize to identify community priorities and address local problems. The first challenge was there was no poverty map in FCT. And there was no way we could start the project without a poverty map because the project is poverty focused. So we have to produce that. That's one of the challenges. Then the two, we have to do revalidation and start new um, PRA uh, perspective rural appraiser to start the work. And we had serious challenge. People never believed to us that uh, from the 10% contribution, and actually some communities might not be able to produce the 10% of their project. And by the design, they have to put that. So 10% was actually um, a problem. Then the other challenge that is there is that some communities are so remote. And getting assistance to them is a bit of a difficulty. Even when the assistance are gotten to them, the way the cost of doing things escalates, they are not able to quickly finish many of the infrastructure to be able to provide them the services. The design of CSDP uh, is such that it is state loan. The loan, the facility is taken by the state government. And the federal government maintains a slim secretariat at the, at the federal level, at the federal project support unit. And we are servicing, as we speak today, 30 participating states. Two more states are about to join the project. So uh, we maintain a lean secretariat and we are servicing a huge, a large number of space. So we have capacity issues. Most of my staff at the federal level are actually overworked. From the national coordinator to the list that were actually overworked. We still long hours to ensure that the needs of the state agencies that were managing their funds, we are managing funds on their behalf, are met.
capacity building is very essential, more especially even at the community level, because those people are going to manage their project. Nobody will manage the project for them. It's, it's not a kind of project that will go there and do and go. No, it's a project that they are the ones to manage, execute and manage the project, as well as sustain the project itself. So definitely they need capacity to do that. Then even at the area council level, again, there are people that are supposed to get all the requests from the communities and so on. They too, they need to have their capacity developed before they do that. The CPMCs, which are the community project management committees that are established, elected by members of the community to manage resources that the government is going to put at their, at their disposals, are trained on the element, basic elements of procurement, of monitoring and evaluation, project management, you know, reporting, supervision, sustainability, even at the community level. So we train them. At the local government level, capacity building is key for the local government development officer, for the local government review committee, what we call the LGRC, and officials of the local government. At the state government level, capacity building is key. We train all the MDAs, the desk officers in all our ministries, departments, and agencies on how to do field appraisal, for example, what is the element of CDD, how to carry out field appraisal to appraise all the proposals that come from the communities, and how to monitor and evaluate projects under the World Bank, how to write reports and all that. So it's very, very key. Our intervention uh, has spanned, as I mentioned, about 30 states of the Federation as we speak. And we have been able to do what we call the micro projects. We have community, community development plans, we call CDP for communities. We have group development plan for group of people who, vulnerable people, disabled people, for example. So, uh, and each of these two groups have what we call micro projects in them. So each CDP, community driven uh, development plan, and each GDP have minimum of two micro projects. Kujie Area Council tops the list with 55 projects in its community development plans and nine projects in its group development plans, totaling 64 projects. Kwali Area Council has 38 projects in its community development plans and 17 projects in its group development plans, totaling 55 projects. Wari has 36 projects in its community development plans and eight projects in its group development plans, totally 44 projects. Abachi has 26 projects in its community development plans and 11 projects in its group development plans, totaling 37 projects. Gwagolada has 25 projects in its community development plans and four projects in its group development plans, totally 29 projects. Abuja Municipal Area Council has 18 projects in its community development plans and six projects in its group development plans, totaling 24 projects. FCT is one of the states where we are very happy that the team there seems to be quite passionate, very energetic, and they've been able to run through six local governments, over 120 community and group development plans within a very short time. So uh, it's, that's not the case in many, many other states. I think the achievements are there for everyone to see. Because today, if you enter the communities, you will see so many projects, be it in health, education, roads, coal beds, electricity supply, and so on. Health is a critical sector. The Federal Capital Territory CSDP between 2013 till date assisted communities with grants to fast track the construction and equipping of 22 primary health care centers and the rehabilitation of 10 others by the community to increase access of communities to basic health facilities. Subsequently, people using the health facilities increased by 4.35% for males and 
0.09% for females. Immunization of children increased by 31.6% for boys and 7.79% for girls. The average distance to health centers reduced by 85.32%, while the average time to health centers has reduced by 84.1%. One of the critical challenges in the rural communities is the absence of access roads. Many sectors of the rural economy depend on good access roads. The FCT CSDP between 2013 till date provided grants in trenches to members of specific communities towards the construction and rehabilitation of 21 kilometers of feeder roads targeting poor communities. During the same period, 64 culverts were constructed by these communities. There has been a 24.9% reduction in average travel time on the constructed and rehabilitated roads. This has also brought a 39.2% reduction in the cost of transportation. One of the reasons for rural urban migration is the opportunity offered by the availability of basic infrastructure like electricity. Electricity is an important catalyst for many economic ventures and the enjoyment of social life. In eight rural electrification projects, the FCT CSDP supported communities with the provision of grants towards the purchase of transformers to eight communities and solar rural electrification to three communities. As a result of these rural electrification projects, there has been a 255.8% increase in the number of households connected to electricity. There was also a corresponding increase of 4.3 new small-scale businesses in very poor communities. The economic subsector also received assistance from the FCT CSDP during the period under review which enables communities to construct 22 equipped skills acquisition centers and the construction of five community town halls. 3,055 males were trained at the skills acquisition centers. 3,162 female beneficiaries received training at the skills acquisition centers. Poor communities received FCT CSDP support financially in the construction of 32 lockup shops and market stalls to increase access to social economic facilities. Three multipurpose grinding machines were installed. Revenue from the multipurpose shops increased by 29.2%, while there was a 6.5% increase in revenue for market stalls. The environment is a sector closely tied to health and other vital sectors that affect the human being. Therefore, grants were provided by the FCT CSDP towards the construction of 310 meters of drainages in communities having access to natural resources and improved environmental management. 800 square meters of land were reclaimed from erosion. In education, Communities were able to construct 20 new classrooms to increase access of communities to educational facilities. This brought a 28.2% increase in new enrollment for boys and 33.1% increase for girls. Similarly, there was a 40% increase in admission for boys and a 60% increase for vulnerable girls. There was also a 74.6% reduction in the average distance taken to get to school. With the FCT CSDP grants provided, communities were able to drill 40 motorized boreholes, rehabilitated eight motorized boreholes, and drilled seven solar-powered boreholes, while nine were rehabilitated. Additionally, 61 hand pumps were drilled, while 10 were rehabilitated. 
the FCTCSDP supervised the drilling of one deep well. Poor communities with FCTCSDP support executed these water projects to increase access to portable water. During this period, there was a 34.56% increase in access to domestic water use for mills and 41.52% increase for females. There was an 82.4% reduction in the average distance to water for the communities. The cost of water also reduced by 64.08%. The average time spent in fetching water also dropped by 74.84%. Also, the community housing, which is also very popular in the Northeast and even in FCT, we have also supported a poor community, I think the lepers group uh, somewhere in, in Abuja to build community housing. I, I mean, and, and the large population of people are being housed and the resources is put in the, at the disposal of the people to do this themselves. Ngoda Debris came to life as a result of the community suffering from assessing the urban centers, such as the Iraq House headquarters. Before that time, people could barely cross with their goods to the market, particularly during rainy season. So, since we came to the aid, approved their project. Glory be to God. Today, the job is monitorable, uh, and the community are happy for that. In all the communities where we have intervened, in all the states where we have intervened, CSDP is like household name. People will tell you, yes, we know about CSDP. So it's a major achievement that people now get to know that putting money, resources in the hands of the people themselves to manage and plan and address their own development challenge is the way to go. And one of the ways to go to address this uh, rural poverty that we have in Nigeria. To appreciate this group and uh, the association because we, we have many widows in our community and because of this program it has helped us to build a uh, skin acquisition now we have other uh, we have uh, grinding processing ng we have uh, and, um, and that is the ng the, 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 that is a um, liquid soap we prepare so many women are have handwork now, G. We have been suffering a lot before. Sometimes when we go to the uh, where we can get water, some of us, we have uh, discrimination. We took us as nothing. Now we can move there to the water just to get the water and they push us away. Sometimes they can beat us there because sometimes when they fetch the water and when they ask us, when we touch their water, they will throw the water away. They cannot even drink it again, as if we are no human beings. But CSDP has now helped us to empower us to go and have our own borough today. CSDP as a project, wonderful. It has helped in alleviating the suffering of the people at the interland, and it has brought development to the doorstep of the rural dwellers. As the project will be coming to an end in June 2020, the FCT administration and the area council need to key into the CDD approach to ensure that the communities and vulnerable groups in the FCT continue to enjoy the provision of social amenities and improving the quality of life and economic well-being of the people. Education, entrepreneurship, physical infrastructure, health will continue to play an important role in the development of rural areas in Nigeria. Rural development is critical because the government is concerned about delivering the dividends of democracy. This bottom-up approach adopted by the CSDP aims at finding ways to improve rural lives with the participation of the rural people themselves so as to meet the required needs of rural communities. The people who understand their culture, their setting, and other prevalent issues in the local areas have to participate in their sustainable rural development. For the World Bank, and for me personally, I think it is obvious that CSDP uh, will become a very strong uh, mechanism for providing services to the poor in Nigeria, either as groups or as individuals. Oh,